When it comes to self-care, ginger can be used in more than just your diet. Try ginger with two J's, a new all-natural ginger essential oil designed to help rejuvenate your mind and body. Ginger's special extraction process results in a higher purity ginger oil, and it comes pre-mixed with carrier oils, so it's always ready to use. Plus, the convenient dropper cap ensures you get the perfect amount every time. Get 20% off your first purchase today at J-I-N-J-E-R dot U-S slash podcast. That's ginger dot U-S slash podcast. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now enjoy a large iced coffee for just two bucks and a breakfast sandwich to make a meal. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Hey, and welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast, an adulting advice podcast production. I'm Danny Sheriff, and this is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. Let's dive in. And guys, please remember that I am not a doctor and nothing on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always seek the advice of your physician. Hey guys, welcome back to the HA podcast. I am excited because today's episode is with Laura Lyons. I worked with her early on and she was the nutritional therapy, functional nutrition therapy practitioner that I first worked with to get my period back. And that's important because I actually tried to get my period back a long, for a long time by myself. And finally, when I like invested in myself and put some financial skin in the game just seems to be like where the thing changed for me um and she just helped me get like testing done and helped me uh dial in my nutrition and my meal timing and just it was just so helpful to have her in my corner with that and she's one of the first podcast episodes that I released on this show so some of you will recognize her name and her voice and she's back today to help me answer some important questions that I just suck at answering so welcome Laura hello (laughs) nice to be here yeah I'm um I'm pumped to have you tell everyone a little bit about who you are what you do who you work with and then we're just going to get straight into these questions that people are literally asking us all the time Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Laura Lyons, like Danny said, Um, and I'm a functional nutritional therapy practitioner. And I have started, I would say over the past two years, decided that I was going to just solely focus on helping women with hormones and their gut health. So um, I started noticing a trend that that was just who was coming to me. So I decided that I was just going to research the heck out of this and make this my thing. And it's just become my thing. So (laughs) why do you think, why do you think you attracted that type of person? I'm not really sure. I really, I'm not sure. I, maybe it's just a vibe I give off. Um, If you got much word of mouth, if you got much word of mouth marketing, it would make sense that like, no, not marketing, but word of mouth clients, it would make sense. Cause it's like, if you helped you know, if you helped me with my hormones, I'm going to recommend you for that exact thing. And then it just yep. like is wildfire. Yeah. I think it just kind of, it all just, I mean, some of it was probably just from you too. I mean, you know, cause I mean, when I started working with you, um, you know, you were probably like one in 10 of the women that were have, dealing with HA, which is interesting. Cause I was like, why mm-hmm. is everyone coming to me that has HA, you know? Um, oh, I never advertised so cool. that. Yeah. I didn't advertise that. That's who I help people <laughs> with, but it just happened that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we published your episode twice. So I guess yeah. over like over a year now. So that just like slowly yeah. people and people want that, right. They want to be like, I know that this woman worked with this person to do this thing. And that's exactly what I want. So, Hey guys, if you have HA, you want to work with a practitioner and Laura's also inside of the HA society as a member. So if you're a member in there, you can literally just like DM her, um, and get talking and see if you guys are fit to work together. But I digress. Today, we have two important topics of discussion. Question one for you. 
because I know that you love to talk about this and literally this comes up all the time, women with HA. Mm. Why, why is breaking the fast, having breakfast important? And like, basically, why do you need to eat so frequently? Why is intermittent fasting not recommended for women with HA? Oh God, it's a loaded question, but <laughs> um, I do. I talk about this all the time on my Instagram. This is like my main thing. Um, so I guess let's talk about what caused HA in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. the constant demands of stress on your body, right? So that's from restricting malnourishment, under eating, over exercising. And eventually it just makes your body feel so unsafe that it stops the communication between your brain and your ovaries. So you no longer have a menstrual cycle. So the whole goal when it comes to AJ is getting your body to feel safe again. So it feels safe enough to reproduce. So when your body is under chronic stress, the Last thing it gives a shit about is making a baby, right? (laughs) I mean, that's probably one of the first things your body shuts down until it feels safe and knows that you're actually able to provide for that baby. And regardless of if you want to have kids or not, having a menstrual cycle is super important. We need to be having a menstrual cycle. So in a way, I guess losing your period is almost like a blessing. It's almost like your body's way of protecting you and like sending that signal like, I need help. I need nourishment. Something's wrong here. Um, So yeah, I mean, there's a few ways that you can help your body feel safe again. One of them is we we will not be doing intermittent fasting. I'll get into that. That's definitely (laughs) not a way to make your body feel safe again. Um, But it's just to provide your body nourishment and provide it often. So like Danny had said, you know, just eating frequently and not fasting. So um, I'd actually say that 90% of the time, like when a person comes to me, when a woman comes to me and she's experiencing HA, it's just due to, you know, low metabolic function from high stress. So like I had said, from restricting and like over-exercising. Um, and that just leads to a lack of nutrients and minerals. So I run hair tissue mineral analysis tests and every single time a person that has HA is showing some type of malnourishment and mineral imbalance. Um, and I mean, the reason for that is just because when we're under stress, we just require so many more minerals and nutrients because we're just using them up at a faster rate. So that's one of the reasons why we just need to eat more and eat more often. Um, yeah. Is it also possible that when you have all of your calories in like a smaller window, it's harder to absorb a lot? Or like if you spread your meals out and eat more frequently, you'll do you'll have a better time absorbing nutrients or is that kind of like a wives tale? Yeah, I don't necessarily believe that. Um, It's just a matter of keeping your blood sugar balance. Um, It is nice to give your digestion like a break for like three hours. Mm. So, you know, so that you're actually digesting your food and um, absorbing it. I mean, there's a whole different thing I could get into about why you're not actually absorbing your nutrients. It's not necessarily like the frequency of eating that's going to cause you to not be able to absorb food or nutrients appropriately. Um, definitely more to do with like your hydrochloric acid and your digestive system. <laughs> and, you know, if there's yeah. anything not, like not functioning well there. Um, but yeah. like, we'll get into that because a little bit in the next question, because that's also, I mean, what happened to me. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically when I when I'm dealing with clients that have um, hormonal imbalances, HA, pretty much you know any type of blood sugar dysregulation. So blood sugar is a huge thing. That's why I have my clients eat so often because um, we need to be eating like within 30 minutes of waking up. I know that sounds absolutely insane. Uh, most people do not do that. Um, but wake, you know, waking up, having a meal within 30 minutes, never having coffee on an empty stomach or black, always making sure you add some cream or something to it. Oh my God, um, I'm so bad at that. <laughs> I know. Well, it's because we've been, I mean, diet culture has told us for so long that you can't be having anything in your coffee. You should always have it black, you know? It's just yeah. so much easier to track my coffee when there's nothing in it. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Oh God, I know. And then also, I mean, this is the hardest one too, is eating every three to four hours. So, you know, you wake up, you have a meal, and then you want to be eating every three hours after that. So So what I've always struggled to understand is just like how 
we evolved to need food that often. It just feels so inefficient, but it's the truth. And I always struggle with that. I know. And so that's another thing too, is, you know, people are always like, oh, our ancestors did that. No, if our, our ancestors would look at us, like we're complete idiots. If they yeah, like who actually <laughs> said, who actually said we were definitely hungry all the time. And that's the thing. So like, I, this is, that's the problem is people look back at like ancestral eating. And I totally believe in that. I mean, that was part of my nutrition program. You know, we learned a lot about ancestral eating and I do believe we should be eating like our ancestors ate, but the problem with that is everybody's like our ancestors used to intermittent fast. Yes, because they had to. They had to intermittent fast. And they have way less stress on their bodies than we do nowadays. Nowadays, So, yeah. yeah they so were- actually, to put it into perspective as well, like in, in our day and age today right now, HA is a problem because there's no need for all of us to be not having our period and, and being in this survival mode. Back then, it had a function. Like it has a function back back then when people weren't getting their period, it was because it was for a function that was helping them in a way to get them out of this period of time where they haven't got food and where it's unsafe or or it's stressful or they're just unsafe and it's not a good time for them to have a baby. Now we're like, and they were going through those periods of time for like a month, a couple of months, like a season, but we have girls going through it for like 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just so it's a lot different. And like I was saying, like, we just don't we're under so much more stress nowadays than our ancestors ever were. I mean, mm-hmm. what did they have to do? Like, go kill a cow for dinner that night? Like, you know what I mean, they didn't have to. They don't have to be like working out, having, you know, building a business. And then I think all about it happens. all the time. I'm like, imagine if our job, like literally we just had to wake up and like, collect some mushrooms right exactly. and then just hang out for the rest of the day <laughs> exactly we don't re- we didn't require as much energy back then as we do now and that is the problem we need energy now so much more than our ancestors ever did back then and that is why intermittent fasting doesn't work for us and just our biology in general intermittent fasting is not going to work for us so i mean i could go into all that if you want me to about why intermittent fasting doesn't i like i am okay like if there's a little more you want to add to it please do i am absolutely fascinated by that stuff yeah yeah so um i guess let's talk about carbs for a second so That's another way to make your body feel safe is making sure that you have carbs and sugar. Yes, sugar is, you know, carbs turn into sugar. Um, So we want to be eating like easy to digest carbs because if we're not eating easy to digest food, then that's also another stressor on our body is our digestive system just can't handle all this food and it becomes stressful. So you want to be eating things like, um, you know, like root vegetables and fruit and fruit juices and dairy and honey. Like those are really easy to digest. Um, And you just get more nutrients, you know, for for your bang, more bang for your buck, basically, than you would with like a piece of kale, you know. (laughs) So, um, right. Yeah. And so the reason why you want to be supplying your body carbs is because glucose is the preferred form of fuel for the body. So if we don't give it what it wants, then its main goal is to always keep balance in the body and homeostasis. It just wants to keep you alive. So the problem we run into is that your body will then start using processes like gluconeogenesis and starts like breaking down your tissues and non-carb sources. And that is super stressful. Basically, that is something that should only be used in a famine. That should not be, that's a backup process. <laughs> we need to be supplying our body with carbs. And the other thing is, is the intermittent fasting community tends to always be like no carbs as well. So that becomes a huge problem. Um, but yeah, I mean, there is a thing called like metabolic flexibility that we've heard of where you can, you know, burn fat or fu- or protein for fuel. But again, that is a backup system. And it's super stressful for our body to have to be doing using that backup system when you can just be providing your body food all the time. And the reason why intermittent fasting doesn't work, so I'll get into that, is because basically your liver can only hold on to glucose for so long. And one reason why people start to like wake up you know, at like two, three in the morning is because your liver ran out of glucose and your liver is saying, Hey, Hey, I need food and you know, feed me now. 
so that is one of the main reasons why I say you have to eat within 30 minutes of waking up because otherwise your body is going to start using its own tissues as fuel. So basically your body just starts eating itself alive if you don't give it fuel. I mean, that sounds absolutely terrifying. Um, I have to share my experience with this too. So I had been, I forget what I was doing before when I started working with you. I was like maybe skipping breakfast. I might've been not eating till I can't remember, but I wasn't eating straight away. And you wanted me to start eating straight away in the morning. So I did. And like overnight, I would start then waking up at 5 a.m. starving for like, and this only went for maybe two weeks, but it was such a bizarre phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And so is that what's happening there? Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, there's a bunch of different reasons for that. Also, it kind of depends on like, what time did you eat dinner? What did you have for dinner? Did you have carbs and protein? Did you have a bedtime snack? what did you have for the bedtime snack? You know, there's all different types of yeah. uh, reasoning for that. But well, I was it's- eating like, ri- like ridiculous meals every because I was because part of the thing that I wasn't doing was having like super balanced meals that were all like you know in the 700 plus calorie range I wasn't doing that prior and then Mm -hmm. working with you I was building these big ass meals that had all of this amazing nutrition in it in it Mm -hmm. and then it was making me like more hungry yeah (laughs) Yeah, no, totally, totally could be because your body was just craving fuel. You started giving your body what it needed and it was kind of, it was probably happy about it, you know? So it was like, oh, you know, it, the good thing is that it was giving you that signal. When I first started working with you, I remember you weren't really getting hunger single, signals at all. So that's why you didn't yeah. eat in the morning. So it's kind of nice. I feel like you got those hunger signals back almost, which is nice. Yeah. So, and like, I have to I totally admit that because it's actually hard work to eat all that food when you're not used to it. And I have been slipping slightly away from it, right? Like into my old habits of like less, um, you know, dense starches and colorful starches and like making sure I had enough fats and all that good stuff. And so I can see my hunger going away again. Like my cues are, I, I'm not as interested in food again in the morning and it's just important to like keep on top of it. Yeah, no, totally. And that's, I mean, especially for somebody like you who it's really easy to lose your period. It's mm-hmm. it's definitely some, something like that is really good to just continue forever because you will start to notice that by slipping out of something, something as simple as just eating every three hours can cause a drastic different, like got, like a drastic change in your, you know, blood sugar balance. And blood sugar balance is basically the cause for <laughs> almost all of these hormonal issues. So amazing. Oh, guys. Well, if you, those of you listening who are feeling like this it doesn't sound like something you've done before, go and do it. Mm-hmm. Tag us on the gram and tell us how you feel. Yeah. Like I sure- want to see you at 5 a.m. <laughs> 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 I know. And make sure it has a carb and a protein together. We don't want just having like a carb bomb. Like make sure it's not mm. just protein and it's not just not just the carbs. But I think when I start, started working with you, you were also kind of against the carbs for a while. You didn't think you were able to like digest carbs or you were having an issue um, absorbing carbs. And that was something we also needed to work on too. Yeah. Like we had done some tests and you had found that I was just rubbish at absorbing carbs. Mm-hmm. Um and we have focused more. And then I work like, so we'll, get, we'll talk about this again, but uh, I came back to you. We did some fresh testing, new year, new me, and um, decided again that I was, yeah, it was carbs. Yes, that was more recently, not absorbing my carbs very well, even though I was eating them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it came down to more like, okay, well, what are you pairing them with? Like, are you only eating yeah. carbs by themselves? And so... Um, you got me onto like making sure I was having a protein with it. And yeah. Yeah, no, super important. And I mean, the other thing about carbs too, I just feel like that's a big thing with um, a lot of women that I work with that have HA. And a lot of the time with HA, there's always a thyroid component. And since like, you know, the thyroid is our main conductor of our metabolism. Um, and we probably wrecked our metabolism just from like over exercising or like under eating or restricting or just from stress in general, but the liver is basically where the inactive thyroid hormone turns into the active thyroid hormone, T4. 
And so the, the liver needs glucose. It needs carbs to do its job. So that's one of the other reasons why carbs are super important, especially when you're recovering from HA for sure. This is amazing stuff. This is really <laughs> good stuff because these are just like the basics, but that um, not a lot of people talk about on podcasts at this point. So yeah, yeah. I mean, HA is a very complicated topic for sure. I mean, I feel like there are so many components. The thi- if we're not supporting our mm. thyroid, you can't really expect to really heal from from HA because. I mean, the thyroid, the adrenals, I mean, that's part of the reason why I run the hair tissue mineral analysis test is just to check on those two things alone. Um, but yeah, the thyroid is a pretty big component to, to HA. So yeah, but like that doesn't have to be as scary as it sounds, right? Because we didn't do like, we didn't talk about my thyroid very much and it's like, no. it's important, but this isn't all as overwhelming as it sounds. It was actually a really simple process when it, like when we worked together, literally I got on a call with you. We, I did a test. What was the first test? I did. I, did I, I didn't do tests with you the first time. No, we didn't do any. I literally just do a test on, yeah, I focused on like literally just the foundational stuff, like, you know, like the food combining and eating at certain times of the day and like the types of food to eat and stuff like that. That's what we focused on. And Mm -hmm. then we did the hair tissue mineral analysis after that. Yeah. Yes. So that we did that and I got my period back and I had it for like a year. And then, so about a year later, I reckon it's been, um, I touched base with you again and we decided to like start optimizing some stuff and that's when we started to test. And that was what I wanted to talk to you about as well today was the different ways to test and why. I get asked this question a lot, but I want, I'm like not the person to answer this. It's people are like, what, what test do I get? How do I get it? Why do I get it? What are we looking for? Um, Can you talk to me about the different tests like blood, Dutch, like HTMA and what avenues would be best for getting your HA diagnosis and which are best for getting to like the actual root cause? Like are those two different things? Like talk to me about testing. Yeah, for sure. So I guess there's really no way to like actually like diagnose HA. Um, I mean, you can use tests to rule out other things like PCOS or, you know, other underlying issues that might be going on, but there's no actual way to, you know, diagnose it. Um, But I, so I really like the hair tissue mineral analysis test. I also offer Dutch testing and then the, and then I can talk about blood work too and why Dutch and HTMA are just better overall. Um, but yeah, so the hair tissue mineral analysis is what we ran. Um, and it's basically just a non-invasive, it's like super simple, painless uh, biopsy of cellular activity in the body. So it gives us an insight into what is going on metabolically, which can't be done with any other test. And um yeah, Danny had done the test and it's basically just, you know, taking an inch of hair from your scalp. It's not as scary as it seems. Um, and the reason for this is because hair is basically just dead, dead cells. So we're seeing what is going on with the minerals inside that cell. Um, so since it takes about three months to grow about an inch of hair, we get to see on average what what's going on inside the cell within that time frame. And yeah, so the hair test, um, basically I have all my clients do the hair test just because I think it's super, super important. Um, and it gives us so much information. So it tells us what's going on with your metabolism. If you're like a fast or slow metabolizer, um, the amount of stress present, like it tells us a lot about your thyroid, about your adrenals, about blood sugar regulation. Um, if you're having a hard time, you know, taking in glucose, if there's inflammation present, uh, tells us about your hormones, your nervous system, your immune system. Um, yeah, it could even tell us things about your digestion. So like if maybe you need some like HCL or enzymes, and if you're having a tough time digesting um, food, and that's why you're not why you're kind of nutrient depleted. So it will, yeah, I mean, it even tells us phosphorus is technically the digestive fire mineral. So you know, depending on that level, it will tell us a lot about um, you know what's going on with your digestion. And then it also tells us if there's heavy metals present, if there may be some like copper toxicity, and like it actually even tells us. And Danny, you probably remember this. It tells us things about like a person's personality and their tendencies, like how they feel or like react to things. And it's funny, like I work with clients and they're like, 
oh, I, I feel like you already know me so well. You're like basically reading my mind. <laughs> so. Yeah. If people who love like the any Enneagram and just all of those personality type tests would be like so fascinating because I think you were like what's your Enneagram I can't even say it and I was just like I don't I don't know <laughs> yeah no um yeah no it's a it's a pretty cool test and I mean basically the reasoning for it is just because minerals are just the spark plugs of life they give us life and they're just involved in every single process in your body. So like anytime your body does anything, like literally anytime you even just move your arm, minerals are involved in that. Mm. <laughs> so. That is one of the things I love that you said that I try to uh, instill in people who are struggling to justify why they need to eat food at all. Um, if they're not exercising, like it's just so prevalent is this question of like, oh, but when am I going to exercise again? I feel so guilty not exercising. And I get it. I totally understand. But when you start to think about how like, yeah, literally moving your arm takes energy, creating moisture for your eye eyeballs takes energy. Your head, like everything about you requires some energy use and you're already depleted as it is. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, we just forget that, um, there's not nothing happening. Yeah. If you're, like exercise isn't the be all and end all of energy and nutrient. Mm-hmm. And use. I mean, think about it like our cells, you know, I'll take it back to like biology, but like our cells are like the building blocks of life, right? And we need minerals and nutrients for our cells to be able to, to actually function, to perform every process in our body. Mm. So it's just, it's just such a bummer when, you know, we start restricting food. And like, you're right. Like some people will be like, why do I even really need to eat if I'm not working out? Because you're, you are, you have an energy energy expenditure that probably, if you were to look it up, you need at least like fifteen hundred calories just to breathe, just to breathe, just to sit and breathe all day. So, can you imagine like restricting calories and working out at the same time? What that does to your body, you know? Oh my god, it's wild. And when you just think about how complex our anatomy is, mm-hmm. I mean it. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I think I think that's something everybody should do is actually look up what your energy expenditure is because you'll probably be pleasantly surprised. And that's why, like, you know, people that are eating like twelve hundred calories a day and then also working out on top of it, you're you're not giving your body anything. You're not supplying your body any energy at all. So, I mean, I think I looked it up and I think my energy expenditure was like. 17 1700 just to live and breathe and that doesn't even include doing this podcast this podcast takes energy <laughs> you know this yeah. is a lot of energy so yeah we just don't think about that stuff yeah okay yeah so yeah that's um the hair tissue mineral analysis and i i definitely that's always my go to test first and foremost no matter what it's just a really good preventative test um just because things are going to show up cellularly before they ever show up in the blood so you know you could present what is all- like a snapshot of one day right yeah. whereas yeah. the hair test is a snapshot of like what 3 months yeah so it's a snapshot of 3 months but it's also um you know like it's kind of like basically what happens is you're not getting in blood work, you're not getting the active form of like what's going on. You're getting inactive, which who the hell cares, right? What's that going to do for us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's not actually what's being used. So um, yeah, when it, when we do it more cellularly, it just, it just makes more sense. But mm-hmm. I mean, most people will, you know, show signs and symptoms of like an underactive thyroid, like you're cold all the time, you're putting on weight, all this stuff. But this test will catch it way before any blood test would. So it's more of like an early indicator of health issues that might be that you might be experiencing. So even like osteoporosis and like arthritis and anxiety and like female issues, you know, it can be preventative for people that, you know, are concerned about maybe eventually getting HA, like their periods are getting lighter and lighter from you know, over exercising or something. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that I liked about it was that I, I just understood it better. I mean, like you sat down with me and explained to me what I was looking at, but it just sort of um, made a little more sense. The results made a little more sense to a layman like myself. Yeah. And it can be kind of a wake up call too. Sometimes it's kind of like, whoa, you know, I'm in like burnout right now or, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it could take a while to build up your minerals. But I mean, I have all the tools, you know, to be able to help build up your minerals, uh, 
pretty quick. I do more like food based stuff. I'm not going to just, I don't like throw a thousand supplements at people. I do like to use more food based. I mean, you know that I'm not like a huge supplement person. So yeah, you know. well, I still felt like I was on all the subs. I'm still on all the subs. Like mm-hmm. the, the, I just finished the chlorophyll, which mm, yeah. I mean, I got used to in the end, but <laughs> literally it was like drinking plants. I know. <laughs> I know it's so good though and I mean it's just because of your HTMA I remember it was because you needed some copper so you needed copper in your life and um and chlorophyll is just a great way to get copper in um but yeah chlorophyll is a tough one but it also helps with like detox and you know it's it's not something everybody should be using because some people can even have an experience just for like you know get symptoms from having just a drop of it because it is very detoxifying so um you never want to take a mineral that's another good thing about this test you want you never want to just take a mineral on its own this test tells you what you need So, you know, rather than just taking a multivitamin that you don't even know if you need these things or, you know, what a waste of money that is, how about you get a test so it can tell you what exactly you need. So, yeah, that was why we did it because I just wanted to take a multivitamin basically, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which is fine. But I tried taking prior to working with you, I had tried taking a multivitamin and honestly, like. When we started to supplement with the specific things I need is when it started to work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, totally. And that's another thing too. Like those, a lot of a lot of prenatals are really junky, and they don't even have like the proper forms or ratios of minerals and vitamins. And that's when we run into problems because you know some of us might not even be absorbing some of these things. So that's when you know we can see on a hair test that your calcium is through the roof. And it doesn't mean you have too much calcium. It means you've been taking this prenatal and your calcium is not being deposited in the right places. So that's when you can see problems like gallstones and you know kidney stones and just calcification in different areas of your body. And that's why we shouldn't just be supplementing like calcium and we shouldn't be supplementing just zinc because then your copper that actually takes away from copper. So then you're going to be low in copper, you know, we shouldn't just supplement with sodium, because then that might cause issues with potassium. And you know what I mean? They're they're all a game of cofactors. And that's why it's so important to actually have this stuff tested. Yeah. And I know when kind of nerding out on the HTMA one at the moment, and I just have one more question about it before Mm -hmm. I ask about the other, uh, like, Dutches and stuff like that. But I remember it also talked about like, what, figure out what type of metabolizer the person is and what does what does it mean to know what type of metabolizer you are and what is helpful about that information yeah for sure so um yeah so i don't i don't remember what yours was you were a slow one it was yeah it was like slow as yeah okay so there's slow one through four, and then there's fast one through four. And depending on what you are, it kind of tells us the state of your adrenals and your thyroid. So, oh, right. Wait, no, you talk, I think you said I was like a mix of slow and fast of some kind. I okay, can't remember. So I don't know if that's were, important, but. <laughs> yes, you are a slow four. So that means I think you had overactive um, adrenal glands, but a sluggish thyroid is basically what yours was saying. So depending on what, what you are slow or fast, it's going to tell us if you're in burnout, if you're approaching burnout, um, if, you know, if your adrenals are, if your adrenals and your thyroid are both kind of shot, or, you know, if you kind of have the yin and yang, like you did, um, So yeah, it also tells us too, kind of, you know, what type of diet you should be eating as well. Cause technically some you're since you're a mix, you're able to handle both protein and carbs pretty well. Um, but yeah, depending on your metabolizer type, it kind of will tell us if you are actually using glucose appropriately, or if maybe we need to have you do a more high protein, uh, fat diet and then add in carbs slowly. So yeah, kind of tells us like what's going on with that too. Yeah, that's why I wanted to ask that because it was interesting to – that is why you recommended to me to pair uh, carbs with a protein all the time. And, like, I I realized after that how often I just eat um, carbs Mm willy-nilly. And, of course, like with HA, we certainly don't want to tell people – like start creating all of these new food rules for people. That's not the – goal I was at a point of like trying to optimize things right I was like I've had my period back for a year now and 
like I more was looking at like the whole getting pregnant thing. So it's really just individual, but it was certainly interesting for me at that time to to be able to go back, reevaluate how I was eating food and and get back in touch with like, yeah, just literally how was I consuming my food and what could be uh, what could help me make the next step forward. Yeah, no. And I mean, that's the thing, like, you know, I think sometimes what's more scary for people with AJ is um, just eating all the things, you know, like just being (laughs) told to eat all the things that can be really scary because you have no idea what the outcome is going to be. So what's good about like, you know, working with somebody is that they'll help you, you know, walk you through so that you know why you're eating certain things and they have, you have more of an intention about it rather than just eating all the things and having no idea what this outcome is going to (laughs) be, you know? Yeah. Which is helpful for a lot of people. It's like this, dude. So AJ recovery is really kind of put in a box for a lot of people. They're like, you do it this way. You eat all the things you relax. You do not even um, think about food quality and stuff like that. And that is valid for people with, for certain individuals with their own circumstances. And then there are other individuals who are like, uh, I got AJ without structure anyway. So Mm -hmm. like maybe some structure is good for me. Like, or it, it can be more stressful for some people to not have some guidelines to help them. And for me, I think I wouldn't be surprised if a part of what worked for me was like not even just – it was just having you tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I didn't have to think about it. I was like, you know what, Laura says she doesn't want me to drink coffee first thing until I eat breakfast – great. That's a simple thing that I can just implement. And I don't have to wonder, oh, should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? Like I've been told by the professional for me and into like this individualized piece of advice for me Mm -hmm. to do this. And And it takes away the stress. Exactly. I was just going to say, it takes away the stress and you don't have to think about it anymore. You know, you have somebody like on your side, like helping you out, walking you through it. And you're working with somebody that's willing to, you know, take steps with you. Like if you don't want to do something, that's fine. Like we'll work on something else right now and see if we can bring down the stress response in a different way. You know, there's always ways around it, but everybody is so different. And that's why you can't just just take a blanket like recommendation. Like, you know, what was the book called? Um, The period book that everybody reads. Is it Um, no period now what? Yeah, that. And, you know, you can't just take that information, implement it and expect that everything's going to go okay. You know what I mean? Like everybody is so different and there's always different underlying causes. Like I was saying, it could be thyroid, could be adrenals, could be pituitary, could be, you know, there's always different things going on. So everybody needs to be addressed in different ways. And that's part of the reason why testing is super important too. So you can get to that root cause of what's going on. So. Yeah. So some, of course there are many, many people who get their period back without getting testing, things like that. Um, What do you think is, I don't know, like the difference between those people? And do you think that like everyone will eventually get their period back if they just chill out and, and eat a bunch of food? It's just that they're basically throwing everything at the wall. And so eventually it'll work or. I, I think it's a, has a lot to do with mindset. So the people that get their periods back are people that have a completely different mindset than those that don't. I do think it has a lot to do with mindset. You could be doing all of the things and still not get your period, but there might be other things going on. There might be other things, you know, it's not always about nutrition. We have to remember that, you know, there's things like trauma and, um, you know, just working on the way you you feel and you think about things has a huge impact on whether or not you're going to get your period back too. So I think a lot of it is just mindset and that's why some people get their periods back and some don't, even if they're doing the exact same thing, even if they are just relaxing and chilling out, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's what happened with me as well. I was like, I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. You, you honestly had just like this switch. Like one day you're like, I'm hiring somebody and I'm just doing it. Like, you know what I mean? You have exactly. to have that happen. Like you need to have that's that. That's so switch. true. Yeah. This has been, we're just over one month with um, the HA Society and this week in like the four or fifth, I think it's the fifth week, um, four girls got their period back like in the same week. Oh. And, it's just, and, and they're just like, I've just been trying forever. And I'm 
not saying it has anything to do with us, but it's like, I feel like you joined the group and because of that, you put yourself in this new mindset. Mm -hmm. No, it is so true. It's, it's having that support, having, even just getting an email that says, you know, HA society every day, (laughs) it has (laughs) in your head, you know what I mean? Even if you don't like, I mean, I get them all the time. I don't always, you know, open them up and read them, but it puts that in my head that like, oh, part of that. And I need to be doing something about that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, (laughs) it does. It's like you're, you're setting up your environment for totally, uh, totally optimal recovery. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. 100%. But uh, oh, did you want to talk about the Dutch test real quick? Yeah. So can you just explain what that is um, Mm -hmm. and why people might use that? Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, the Dutch test, I also offer the Dutch test. Um, It's a urine test. So it kind of gives us an insight into what's going on with your hormones. So, you know, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, um, the balance between all three of them, and then DHEA and your androgens and how your hormones are being metabolized and their pathways. Um, And it kind of gives us like a clearer picture of your adrenal glands and what's going on with your cortisol and how it's functioning throughout the day. Um, But the only bummer about the Dutch test, especially with, this is why I definitely would say go with the HTMA first and work on that. Um, The Dutch test is great for for a cycling female, like a girl that actually has her cycle. Um, When your cycle isn't regular or you don't have one, the testing can kind of suck because you have to, rather than taking like one, you know, I think it's like five samples over one day, you have to take like 25 urine samples over a course of a month. (laughs) So it's kind of a lot, you know? Um, But yeah, I mean, the the Dutch is definitely going to be a better option than a blood test. Um, Just because like I had said before, like serum testing, like blood serum doesn't, doesn't measure like it, it only measures the protein bound, like inactive form of hormones. So it doesn't really give us much information. Um, and blood tests are just more expensive. And they're just, like I said, like you even said, you know, they're just a single snapshot in time. They're not, you know, going to show us, especially when it comes to cortisol, we want to see it fluctuate throughout the day to see like, you know, where your cortisol is at. Um, so yeah, overall, the Dutch just gives us a better representation of your hormones. And actually, I can attest to this because um, I actually had a blood test done like a little while ago, and it had told me that I had low estrogen and high testosterone. And I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, I'm starting to think, you know, my mind's running and I'm like, do I have PCOS or something? You know, like what's going on here? And then I did a Dutch test after the blood test just to, you know, for kicks and giggles. And I got a completely different result. And the results actually correlated with what I was feeling, like what was going on. It didn't make sense for me to have low estrogen and high testosterone. That didn't even make sense for anything that was going on. Um, So yeah, the Dutch test can just be a way, way better way about it. Um, But yeah, I mean, I don't usually have people do Dutch testing until you know, we address the HTMA because we kind of want to see what's going on southerly because you're never going to heal unless we figure out those mineral imbalances. And I kind of want to make sure your gut is in a good place that you're actually detoxing your hormones and um, absorbing nutrients. All that stuff is more foundational. And that is more important than getting a Dutch test to see where your hormones are at, like right off the bat. I kind of want to do a little bit more work with you before we just, you know, dive into a Dutch test, especially if you kind of already have a compromised, like under functioning metabolism. So. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I I didn't know that, but it makes sense because I mostly know like, yeah, only fully cycling women who have Dutch tests, but I occasionally get someone DM me and they're like, I had a Dutch test and this is what it said. And um, it just seems like not that helpful. (laughs) And that's the thing. You can kind of just already guess that like you, that you, you know, have a hormonal imbalance if you're not getting your period. So how about we work on the foundations that are going to help you get your period back and get your hormones balanced rather than figure out exactly what that hormone imbalance is. A Dutch test would be great though, to kind of see 
um, especially people that are more concerned that maybe they have PCOS rather than HA. This will kind of, you know, tell us if that is the issue or if you have HA. So that's always that's always a good way. That's one of the reasons to get a Dutch test, just kind of to narrow down and see like if there's not if there's something more going on than just the HA component. Oh, okay. Amazing. Well, thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. Honestly, a lot of people have a lot of questions about testing mm -hmm. and a lot of questions about fasting. So I feel like we just knocked out some like, you know, big FAQs and I can point people to this question and to this yeah. episode and it's going to be really, really helpful. Yeah. I understand that you in January have a group program coming up. Is that 4HA? What's that about? Yeah. So um, it's actually, I think I'm going to do February. I don't have the exact date yet. Um, but yeah, it would be fantastic for anyone dealing with HA. So it's just, it's super educational. Um, it's a group program. It's six weeks long. And um, it teaches you just how, you know, to understand your body, your body better. And it goes into detail on like our main metabolic glands. So everything I just talked about, like your thyroid and your adrenals and your blood sugar, it kind of gives you that why, like, why am I doing what I'm doing? And it gives you you know, the science behind why you're doing what you're doing and how your body works and our biology as women. Um, and it's just a whole, it gives you like a whole nutrition guide and the foods you should be eating for recovery. And it's basically like the ultimate nutrition guide for women. <laughs> and it's like basically everything I wish I had years ago when I went on my health journey. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty awesome it. program. Yeah. Yeah. I love letting people just know about the different programs people have out there because the AJ Society is not a program. That is an area where like you might be working with a practitioner, you might be working with a program. You might not be as well. You might yeah. be like fine solo, but it's like a place where people come to get support mm -hmm. for whatever they're doing, wherever they're at and to like mix with other girls who yeah. are going through the same thing and learn from them and attend events with practitioners and stuff like that. Yeah. But there's these amazing like group programs that have like a protocol and, and mm -hmm. specific curriculum that people can follow. And that's the difference. And so I want people to know about those groups, like what you're doing. So mm -hmm. make sure you email me the link to the program so I can put it in the show notes so that everyone can literally listen to this episode and go straight down to that, <laughs> click it and Perfect. see if it's for them. Yeah. Sounds good. And yeah, I am still taking, I do take one-on-one -on -one clients too. Um, but yeah, the program's also because it, it dives into everything, everything you could possibly want to know. And it is similar to working one-on-one -on -one with me because you do have my support throughout the whole program. So like you can send me questions. We have a Facebook group. We chat throughout the whole program. You can ask me personal questions and I can guide you throughout the way. So it's not like you're just getting this group program and you don't get any personalized recommendations. You will as well get personalized recommendations just like you would if you were to work one-on-one -on -one with me. Uh, one -on -one yeah. That's so awesome. That's really, really cool. I'm so excited you're doing that. <laughs> now, there's just more and more resources for women out there. Yeah. Laura, thank you so much. For sure. Yeah, this was fun. I feel like we should I feel like we can always talk about this stuff forever. Like <laughs> every time we're I'm on a podcast with you or I talk with you, it's like, oh, it can probably go for three more hours. I know. And I always have questions and I'm like, oh, <laughs> like ancestors and like all of the functions of my body like what are they all <laughs> yeah I, know. I get like an email from you so like why am I supposed to be eating this potato <laughs> <laughs> yes I do that I do like message my uh, my much smarter friends and I and I'm like oh my god I did have, I was meant to ask you why do people get why do people get sore <laughs> after going all in like after trying to get their period back I was going to message you the other day and I'd be like, oh no, I'm chatting with her on the podcast. Oh yeah. Do you so, know like why people get sore? <laughs> like like sore like after working out or just like general? Oh, like they're like, I went all in and now I'm aching. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of reasonings for that, but <laughs> honestly, it might just be the fact that they're actually nourishing their body and they're having almost a reaction because their body has been wanting it for so long that, that it's showing a symptom of some sort, you know, it's kind of like mm. a Herxmeyer reaction, you know, where sometimes things can get worse before they get better. Um, but yeah, they're probably just going all in and their, their body probably does like it. And it probably is just a temporary, very temporary thing. So 
Incredible. Yeah. yeah. The body's weird. Well, <laughs> I can I continue to learn about that that symptom for my yeah. I do like a Facebook uh, sorry, I always say that an Instagram live every Friday. Mm-hmm. And that's a question I got. And whenever someone asks me a question, I'm like, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I'm always like, I'll come back next Friday with the answer to that. So yeah, I no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could do some research on it. I'm sure I could dig up something about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's another, it's another bizarre common question. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, thank you guys. Find Laura on the Instagram uh, Wild Lines Wellness, right? Yes. That one, yeah. I know. I think you Crushed always. It. I think you always mention my um uh, my personal Instagram. I have two Instagrams. So. I just like I try to remember both, and they're both good. Um, <laughs> yeah. So find her there. Link is in the show notes to all of that stuff. And yeah, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and chatting to all my ladies. Yes, it was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast and if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily. So if you do that, you're doing a service to all of the women. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods. That are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now enjoy a large iced coffee for just two bucks and a breakfast sandwich to make a meal. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal.